I spent, like, a lot of last episode going, Hey, I should go get Surf. And then I proceeded to go in, beat up all the kimono girls, and then not even get the reward for doing it. I just went into these women in their dance studio, humiliated them in front of an audience, and went, that's my own reward enough, and left. I am ashamed. There is no meme. This is just a threat. Welcome back to Pokemon Crystal. Last time, I failed to catch a Scyther repeatedly, but then I eventually caught it. No, the, the pseudo Wudo I caught. I, this, this is all kinds of confused. We're teaching Oingo Boingo how to surf. We're getting rid of Water Gun. Surface HMs would not be as widely hated if they would just be better moves. Like, you don't even necessarily have to make them great moves. Like, even strength isn't bad because it's just a good normal type move. My name's Eugene. I'm on the trail of a Pokemon named Suicune. And you are... Stev11. Glad to meet you. I heard rumors that Su Suicune is in this burned tower. So I came to look. But where could it be? I don't know. Up your button around the corner. <laughs> um, uh, he's the, This is... I'm the gym leader. I study what are said to be the legendary Pokemon Suicune, Entei, and Raikou. Yuzin is here, so I've decided to investigate the tower with him. Now, oh, cool. Now, the Burn Tower has, honestly, one of the cooler music tracks in Gen 2. Uh, we're going to get interrupted for the battle theme. And there are two new encounters you can get. Well, okay. Technically speaking, there's only one new encounter. But I'll explain. Anyways, Geodude, destroy this rat. And there it goes. So, we are now level 21, and if I remember correctly, we will now have the ability to explode. Yay! I can tell my Pokemon to kill itself. Um... It would a defense curl, tackle at least in case something resists rock and ground, which I don't think anything does, actually. Whatever, we now have the means to explode. Oh crap, I forgot to grab the rock smash TM. That's fine. I don't necessarily need whatever that is with Rock Smash. Rock Smash is not a required HM in this game, like it is in later entries. Hey, coughing! This is one of the new encounters here. Or, I'll explain. Coughing is a mono-poison type that wants to focus on defense, which is really good. Because, um... Blah, blah. Poison is a good defensive type. So Coughing and its evolution, Weezing, are very well geared to that in their stat line. There are a few problems, though. First of all, this is before abilities, so Coughing doesn't have Levitate. Which was one of the reasons it's a really good defensive Pokemon, because it just eliminates one of Poison's weaknesses. So now you have two to worry about, Ground and Psychic, but you've got some useful resistances, so that's not too bad. Its level up move pool isn't the greatest. If one gets close enough to it when it expels poisonous gas, the gas swirling inside it can be seen. That is kind of cool. Um, Coughing's coolest moves, in my opinion, that being like Pain Split and Destiny Bond, are either egg moves you're never going to get, or a move you get at like level 50. That's kind of a problem. But if you need a Pokemon to just stand there, take hits, dish out decent damage, and learn some wonky moves, albeit some you gotta work for, like it can get Flamethrower and Thunderbolt by a post-game move tutor, Fire Blast and Sludge Bomb by TM, Rollout, it's got some funky moves, but attacking isn't what Weezing does. Weezing stands there and doesn't die, though its damage is actually decent. 
though mostly carried by the sheer power of the moves it learns. Alright, so this is coughing and wheezing. I need something gassy. I don't know, uh... Beans. Beans, 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 they're good for your heart. The more you eat, the more you fart. Perfect. Now, with that done, we have the one encounter that I care about. And we can go on to... Oh, hey. But, uh... What you doing over there? Alright. Someone, something's got to be done about all these Pokemon I'm encountering. I am quite sick of it. Hello there! Oh, it's you. I came looking for some legendary Pokemon that they say roosts here. But there's nothing here! Nothing after all the trouble of coming to this dump? No way! It's all your fault! Alright, buddy. Calm down. So, fun fact, I nicknamed this guy U2, because I hate the band U2, in case you forgot for some reason. And... I talked about this Let's Play to one of my buddies, my buddy Walter specifically, and he then tried to talk about how you two- Don't paralyze, don't paralyze, don't paralyze. Fuck. About how you two actually makes good music. And that's why I didn't want to get paralyzed. Because were it not for getting cursed, Geodude can easily sweep Silver's entire team. Haha. <laughs> Maybe it still can. Alright, that... Sting has been so unbelievably crippled. But maybe Sting can be built different. Ah, uh, that's not good. It's okay. We're just going to use Magnitude, it's not going to miss, and then I'm going to knock one of your Pokemon out every single turn. Because doing so means that, um, Curse will never have a chance to activate again. Yeah, and then for an entire car ride, my buddy Walter tried to explain to me that U2 makes good music, and then tried to tell me that Creed makes good music, and like, none of it worked. There's no way, right? Like... There's no way that Sting powers through this. Oh, come on, Sting. You're half dead. Barely limping. Make it to the finish line. Oh, That'd have been so cool. Regardless, thank you, Sting. You fought the good fight. Alright. Axel... Punch this magnet. And down it goes. So. Do 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 do. Level 22. Basically, I'm sad to learn that my friends have terrible taste. None of them should be trying to defend you two in my presence. You would never be able to catch a legendary Pokemon anyway. Hmph! What are you doing falling into a hole? Some genius you are. Serves you right. Shut up, you two. We are now in the basement of the Burned Tower. Raikou, Entei, and Suicune. The legendary cats vanish into that good night. It's what, like Suicune's a panther, Entei's a lion, and what is Raikou? Raikou? Like a tiger? Hello, Yuzine. I dug a hole here, too. I was shocked. Suicune raced by like a blur, right in front of my eyes. For ten years, I chased Suicune, and I finally got to see it. I'm all choked up. Stev11, I owe this all to you. Thank you. I heard that the legendary Pokemon of Ecritique test chosen humans by allowing them to get close. I'm going to track Suicune. It is really weird that they gave Suicune a plot in Crystal. Like, that's such a weird Pokemon. 
Regardless, though, we have an encounter to find. Now, we could go to the next gym. But, you know... There's actually something I want to do, and I've been debating whether or not to do it. But, I can finish my team. I can just complete my team right now. And I've been, like, going back and forth on whether or not I wanted to. Because it does kind of take the mystery out of things. But I think I'm going to go do it. And I'm going to go do it by moving over here. Because in this route, Route 38... um, Actually, before I do anything, let me take care of that Sailor Man. A good old Oingo Boingo. I've been overseas, and I know all about all... Okay, let me guess. You've been overseas, and you're going to have, like, one water type. Oh, wow, just one Pokemon. Whooper! Look at him! He's whooping! Oingo Boingo, destroy him. And, okay, we don't get a one-shot with a weak Psychic-type attack. Kind of cringe, not gonna lie. So now, let me use the power of Confusion again. And, there were actually a lot of Pokémon you can catch in this route. Like, a lot. So without further ado, let's get going. First on the docket... Raticate! I already went over Raticate. This is kind of the point in the game where a Raticate isn't very good because its stats will start to fall. You can use one for a little bit, but if you wanted to use Raticate, you'd have just been using a Rattata from earlier. Wow, okay. Gosh darn rat taking out my Oingo Boingo. Okay, I have used the Pokeball. Wow. What do you mean? You are Rattata. Why are you being so hard to catch? Fine, I'll use a Great Ball. Raticate's catch rate is not this low. Oh my god. Thank you. What kind of Pokemon is it? Rat. The webs on its hind legs enable it to cross rivers. It searches wide areas for food. Give a nickname to Raticate. Already nicknamed Rattata. No need. What is in the lead right now? Bambi? Bambi's a little low on stats for that. Let's go to Littlefoot. Rattata is not what I'm looking for. Not what I'm looking for. Not what I'm looking for. Not what I'm... That's what I'm looking for. Thank you. Next up on the list is Magnemite. Magneton has really good bulk because it's part steel. And in turn, really good special attack as well. Electric Steel is a really cool typing. It doesn't learn an electric move stronger than Thundershock. What he just did to me right here? This is as powerful as the Magnemite line is ever going to get. That is a problem. A very real problem. Sonic Boom can do decent damage for now, but that's also going to quickly fall off. It really suffers from Thunderbolt not being easily teachable in this generation. And also, Flash Cannon and Special Steel moves don't exist yet. It can get Zap, Ga Zap Cannon post-game... But Zap Cannon sucks as a move, so... Eh. The electricity emitted by the units on each side of its body cause it to become a strong magnet. What's a magnet I can nickname it after? 
I I think this was the same nickname I used in the Pokemon Yellow Let's Play. But you give me famous magnets. We're going Magnet Man! From... Mega Man. Wow, I just... Blanked. And that is- And now there are two more Pokemon that I can catch. But they're a bit of a doozy, so I'm actually going to go heal. Oh, Pokemon Center! I would like your finest healing magic, please! And I should probably go buy some more balls at the Mart. Excuse me, Mart salesman! I would like some balls, please. Give me ten great balls. And, um... Ten Pokeballs. And then I should probably have some Super Potions. I think that's the first time I've bought potions this entire Let's Play. Alright. We're going back. Because I have unfinished business in this grass. Should probably have a Pokemon faster than Oingo Boingo in the lead slot. I don't want that rat. I don't want that magnet. I don't want that magnet. I don't want that rat. I don't want that magnet. I don't want that rat. How many more times am I going to say this? And Well, actually, Pidgeotto is not what I was looking for, but that is a Pokemon I forgot that I can catch right now. Um, I'm going to give it a status condition. Pokeball. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA start. Pidgeotto, if you could please get in the ball. There we go. Do, 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 do. Hmm. Pidgeotto's data was newly added to the Pokedex. It slowly flies in a circular pattern, all the while keeping a sharp lookout for prey. Um, already nicknamed Pidgey. Have no need for Pidgeotto. Alright. Wasn't what I was looking for. But it's what I found. That is one of the things I was looking for. Tauros. Tauros is one of the gods of Gen 1 in competitive, and in single player, it's also pretty good. It is a mono-normal type, which is pretty good in the early goings, because rock and steel and ghost weren't very common. So Tauros does manage to have pretty good staying power. It's fast and strong, which is another thing it has going for it. It's speed and attack stats, both really good. It's got pretty decent bulk, like really good physical defense, usable HP and special defense. It, um... It does not have any special attack, even though it can learn Blizzard, Fire Blast, Thunder, Flamethrower, Thunderbolt, Ice Beam. Uh, for no reason, Zap Cannon's there too. It does get scary face by level up for some useful support. Um, eventually getting Thrash, which is okay. Really, you're going to be using Return with this thing. But since you can already have Return, eh, that doesn't exactly matter. Because you can just immediately give it a powerful stab move. And it's really just going to be really fast and hit really hard. The problem is it's pretty hard to catch. Which is why I bought all these balls. However, we will eventually win this war of attrition. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Thank you. Okay. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, PA start. So, Taurus. Solid Pokemon. However, one that might prove to be more difficult than it's worth. Get in the ball. Get in the ball. That's gonna be bad. Okay. Now we just gotta keep doing this. Oh. Huh. So when it wasn't debilitated by a very powerful status condition, that's when it got caught. Sure. 
These violent Pokémon fight over other members of their herd in order to prove their strength. Alright, Tauros is a bull. What is a famous bull? Um, I'm gonna go with... Uh... Chicago. After the Chicago Bulls. Chica... Chicago? Go where? <laughs> Back to the Pokemon Center to heal. That's where I'm going. Because there is but one more Pokemon over there that we can catch and add to our army of Mons. Alright. Hope to see me again. I hope I don't have to go to the hospital for anything ever again, Nurse Joy. Okay. Come on. One more encounter to have. Ain't, it can't be that hard, right? I don't want that bird. That rat can go F itself. That rat can go F itself. I just saw that rat. I don't want that rat either. Tauros, you were just here. Raticate, I don't want you. Trust me. This Pokemon I'm looking for is pretty cool. <sighs> I just have to fight for it. And you guys get to get stuck with me as I try to fight for it. The good news, though, is it's it's actually a 5% chance. Which isn't bad at all. So... Yeah. Surely, I'll be able to do something here. Come on now. Please? Pretty please? Oh, there it is. Miltank! The Ace of Whitney is now yours to command. And Miltank, like Whitney showed off, is a pretty good Pokemon. Miltank is a bulkier normal type than, um, Tauros. But it is really bulky. It's got good base HP, really good defense, good special defense. And here's the crazy thing. It's fast. For a defensive Pokemon. Its base speed is actually decent. For this time in Pokemon's life. 80 base speed will eventually be hot garbage. But for a bulky Pokemon, it's got decent speed going for it. So you have that. You can It will learn rollout naturally. And then it can also get access to Body Slam, which is one of the greatest normal type moves. It'll get Return eventually. It comes with Stomp. And it becomes a very solid physical attacker. Its special attack is hot garbage. D don't even try, you are not going to succeed trying to use this thing as a physical attacker. Or special attacker, excuse me. And, if you're one of those people that... Damn it! I was hoping if I didn't acknowledge it, it wouldn't actually break out of the ball. If you're one of those people that, like, don't like using items in battle, Miltank gets milk drink! It can drink its own milk and heal half its HP without using an item, and that's pretty cool. So, it's just an all-around, really solid normal type. And... One Shake. Damn it! We got ourselves a One Shake Jake over here. But that's okay. I'm gonna get this thing. Oh! I, I got it. Okay. <clears throat> Milk Cow. In order to milk a milk tank, one must have a knack for rhythmically pulling up and down on its udders. Rhythm Haven fans, your true calling has been unearthed. So I need to think of a famous cow. And there's only one cow I think of, and that is Otis from The Barnyard Show and Movie. Now you're thinking, is that it? Nope! We've gone to the west, and now it is time for the east. Because to the east of Ekatrik is a ball. 
Oh, it, literally, it's an Ultra Ball. And with the Ultra Ball, we're going to go into Mount Mortar. Mount Mortar has two encounters in inside that we need that we want. One is Machop. Now you might be thinking to yourself, don't you have one? I do, but that Machop that you get from a trade, I'd rather have my own Machop. In fact, you can probably tell why. Especially since I led this catching spree with I'm finishing my team. So Machop's nickname. Um, what is a famous fighter? It's, it's gotta be Goku. Like, it's just, it's just gotta be Goku, right? Like, who else could it be? And that is actually only one encounter within Mount Mortar. I just have to make sure that the other one is yes. So while we are walking about... Oh, hold on. I have done research, and I have learned that the other encounter is only available at night. So actually, that second encounter is a lie. We're just going to go home. You didn't see anything. Nothing. So, those are all the encounters we can get. Well, okay. That's not entirely true. With the Pokemon that we already have access to, like, specifically Onix and Scyther, you can get a Metal Coat over here by the Magnemite. They have an 8% chance to have it, like the King's Rock, for Slow King. Now, unlike Slow King, where you can just get the King's Rock naturally through the game when you get Surf, um, the Metal Coat that Magnemite holds is not available until post-game normally. So if you want to use a Caesar or a Steelix, you will have to catch a Magnemite here and just hope that you'll eventually get one after hunting for Magnemites over and over and over. I'm not doing that bit again. So as you can see, I now possess a Steelix. And this time, I actually did get the Metal Coat. It only took me like 13 Magnemites. So, I guess God noticed that I had suffered enough with the Slowpoke. But, I did something even funkier. Because I would like to go over here to my PC box. Bill's PC. Withdraw, and there's some of the Magnemites I caught. You'll notice that I have a female Onyx, and a and the pseudo Wudo has been leveled to 29. Let's do the daycare, because at 28, you'll see at the bottom of your screen there, pseudo Wudo knows a funny little move called Rock Slide. Rock Slide is an egg move for Onyx. So, through the power of eugenics, I have created a Steelix. With Flail and Rock Slide. So, right now, Steelix's move pool is Dig, Screech, Flail, and Rock Slide. That is pretty cool. And now, the new additions to the team are Otis the Miltank. I am a huge fan of big, effy normal types, as evidenced by my Pokemon Yellow's usage of Snorlax, and Miltank is part of the team. I gave it the rollout TM, even though Miltank does learn rollout naturally, it doesn't learn it until level 30-something. So I just gave Otis the uh, rollout TM because nothing else is using it. You already know about Magby. You already know about Bayleaf. You already know about Oingo Boingo. There's Goku as Machop, who is also going on our team, I think I never actually did a bio for Machop. Machamp is bulky, gets the actual good fighting moves of this generation, which is just Vital Throw and Cross Chop, and <clears throat> just has a lot of attack to use it with. So this completes our team, with Miltank, Machamp, and Steelix being physical attackers, and Slowking, Meganium, and Magmar being special attackers, 
and they're mostly all beefy boys, which is my favorite type of thing to run, except Magmar, who is fast and frail but powerful. So you might have noticed where's Sting. Sting the Geodude was always meant to be a temporary team member. I thoroughly enjoy using temporary team members because it gives more diversity to your run and it lets you bridge the gap and use Pokemon you might struggle to use if you had to wait for them. I love Geodude, I love Golem, but I wanted to use Steelix because it feels wrong. Like, the Metal Coat is given to you in the post-game, so it feels wrong to have a Steelix at this point in the game, even though it's always been possible to have a Steelix at this point in the game. So, like, I've done this before in Soul Silver. In Soul Silver, I've used a Caesar in the main game, and it feels just... it feels like you're cheating, even if you're not. Like, even though this is very obviously possible, it feels like you're being sneaky or something. So that is why I am using Steelix, plus you don't get to use Steelix very often on the account that it is a trade evolution. So I think the fact that I'm using one is really unique. Not many people use it in a main game outside of very specifically, what was it, Platinum that lets you just catch a Steelix in the wild? So hopefully we'll be able to show off Steelix's absolutely ridiculous physical defense. Yeah, that was that was gonna happen eventually. I was like, I'm getting really lucky with all these licks. So now, you know what? Maybe I'll be able to KO you with Rock Slide. I certainly won't be able to. Di oh my God! Really, a five power point spite on a move with ten power points. All right. Oh, and I forgot to explain the nickname of our Steelix. Steelix's nickname is Reen Schwarzer, after the main protagonist of the game, Trails of Cold Steel. Huh? 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 Okay. So, it is really, like, I feel really cool to have a Steelix. I've never used one in Gen 2, so I'm curious to see how well it does. My money's going to be on pretty well. Hopefully. And down goes the ghastly. Woo! Do -do 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 -do. Sage Ping, give me your money. Oh, thank you. So it does feel a little weird to have an entire team at this point before the fourth gym. But that's kind of just how Johto's designed. Like, there are some neat Pokemon after this. There's Girafferig, Mantine, I guess. And, you know, like the Lapras and stuff. But, at this point in the game, you have access to so many powerful Pokemon. So, it's not unlikely that you have a full team at this point. Alright, you using Curse might make things awkward. So, I believe this has been mentioned before, but Rollout actually, um, gets powered up by Defense Curl as long as you don't miss a 90% the second attack. I'm not entirely convinced that rollout actually has 90% accuracy. It misses way more than 90% of the time. Otis might go down here because of that miss. Might. Actually, I don't think Haunter can do anything other than curse. Because Otis is a normal type, which makes it immune to ghost. So I think curse is literally the only thing Haunter can do. Got her. GG's.
Whoa, $800. That's awesome. Hello there, mysterious spooky spirit man number three. Your name is... <laughs> sage Jeffrey? That does not sound like a sage name. Like, all the sages have been names like Ping, Lee, and then you got Jeffrey? <laughs> I don't sound right. Alright, so that is going to be annoying, but I have drank milk. Now the goal here is to whittle this Haunter down with the exact same strategy I just used in all the others. And I believe a tier 3 rollout should be strong enough to... Oh, that was their only Pokemon. Huh. Well... Hello there, final ghost lady. You shall win? More like, shut up. Alright, Ghastly. I think I'm just gonna start with a rollout. You know, just... Okay, never mind. Cool. That's okay. You know what? Like, your strategy won't ever be foolproof. That is the important thing to remember. It's also very funny to watch these ghosts try to have an attack that can hit me, and they don't. And Haunter... This is a Tier 3 rollout? Will it one-shot? I don't know. I don't think so. It won't. Ugh. Ooh, if I miss, Otis goes down, because I don't think this is how it works in later generations, but Curse does not take effect if you KO the opposing Pokemon. I'm pretty sure that that isn't how it's supposed to work, but, oh, that's, that's just, that's just uncalled for. Um, I'm going to go into the ether. I'm gonna go heal up, and I'm gonna just smash one thing real quick. Oh, also, if you're wondering how I leveled up Pseudo Wudo eight levels, this route over here in the daytime is like tailor made for Pseudo Wudo. Raticate, Miltank, and Tauros give a lot of experience. That's a new Pokemon. I guess I'm gonna do a bio for Meowth. Um, I guess I'm not doing a bio for Meowth. So, Pseudo Wudo can just spam Low Kick on all the normal types and not take much damage because it's a rock type. And then Low Kick is also super effective against Magnemite. And then Pidgeotto goes down to Rock Throw. Like, I could get that Pokemon up so easily here. The eight levels went by in no time. And being able to do that definitely helped. All right, there's Meowth. Meowth and, by extension, Persian are kind of just your average rock, or rock, pure normal types. They're really fast. They Meowth evolves soon-ish. I really need to remember that I'm very powerful and should stop one-shotting these cats. And... It doesn't quite have the power that it did in Gen 1. In Gen 1, because of how critical hits worked, um, Persian was incredibly powerful because critical hits went with your speed, and Persian was fast. Now, critical hits work in a way that actually makes sense, so without the instant, like, super crits of, of Stab Slash... Meowth and Persian don't have much going for them. I mean, okay, uh, it loves things that sparkle. When it sees a shiny object, the gold coin on its head shines too. So it's a greedy cat 
Alright, that's perfect. It will be Khajiit. Because Khajiit has wares if you have coin. Where is the letter J? There it is. I don't know if that's actually how you spell Khajiit. So, I don't think... I can look it up, but I don't think that Meowth really gets anything that makes it even, like, mentionable compared to other mononormal types. Like, it doesn't have the availability of Raticate. It doesn't have the good stats of Tauros or Miltank. Like, I actually think Meowth genuinely has nothing. But, I'll quickly run it through. Um, it gets Faint Attack. It can learn weird moves like Shadow Ball. And its attack stat is a whopping existent. It, it's fast, it can use Shadow Ball. I guess that's something it's got going for it. So... Thank you guys very much for watching. Next episode, we're going to take on the gym leader. Like, right away. I am going to believe that this cow is going to be able to completely solo the gym. Wait, hold on. You can use milk drink? Like, wait, you can use milk drink on allied Pokemon? What? What? Oh, I...